Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military of Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. First let's talk about the common situation in Ukraine and the sources are saying that according to information we have the heavy snowfalls up of up to 50 centimeters and icy conditions are forecast in the country in the coming days. Of course it will affect not just the situation on the combat line but also it will affect the energy facilities and energy infrastructure structure of Ukraine. There are going to be more blackouts for a long period of time and as you can see the Russians still haven't started bombardments and attacks with missiles to Ukraine energy facilities. Also interesting update is coming from, uh, not like uh, update, but the analysis about the entire, let's say, Ukrainian energy facility situation. So as you know, the Western countries invested significant number of money to Ukraine to repair and to fix the energy facilities to prepare Ukraine before the winter period of time. But as we know, according to information we have, the Ukrainians haven't managed to do this. And we have like the normal question, where did all the Western money go that was allocated for this. Now let's move to the situation on the ground and we'll start with Krynkin and Kherson direction. The Russian sources reported that as a result of counter-attack they managed to force the Ukrainians to step back from the forest. If you remember yesterday we discussed that the Ukrainians started like, desperate attacks from Krynki in direction of the positions around Krynki, mainly the Ukrainians are focused on the forest that located on the south, but the Ukrainians were uh, defeated as a result of the Ukrainian counterattack and were forced to step back uh, to the ruins of Krynki. And uh, later the Russians uh, attacked and bombed the village with guided bombs uh, F-500. So as you can see, the Ukrainians still haven't found a solution how to spread, how to improve their positions in Krynki. They stuck in these ruins which are under very heavy fire of the Russian aviation, of Russian artillery forces and so on. So basically we see and that the Ukrainians are no longer able to improve their positions, that the Russians block the Ukrainians from the south, that the Russians block the Ukrainians uh, along the Dnipro river, not just on the Russian bank of the river, but also on the Ukrainian bank of the river. I think that uh, the days of Krynki footholds are numbered and we just need to wait. Of course, the Ukrainians try to do something they try to bomb the Russian positions, the Russian forces, the Russian reinforcements, reserves, and so on. But uh, all these attacks, all those attacks are numbered. Um, they are able to make just a small damage because uh, f to deal any damage for the Russians, first of all, they need to use either HIMARS, but the, not the, by the, the rockets, missiles of HIMARS are limited, and or to use artillery systems. But as soon as the Ukrainians bring artillery system closer to the combat line, the Russians destroy this artillery system with Lancet strike. The Russians also continue bombardments of the villages on the line Mikolaevka, Dradekamyanka, Kazatsk and Berislav. Uh, important thing that we need to note about the Kherson direction that there are still no snow according to geolocations we have. So the uh, snow uh, area starts somewhere from Zaporozhye direction and the snow area goes from this area further to the north in direction of Kupensk. When talking about the Parozhi direction, as you can see, we see a lot of icons during the previous night. There are a few very interesting ones. As we discussed, either the Russians and the Ukrainians continue their improvements in the warfare. And for example, on this video, we see how the Russian soldiers uh, made a very tricky thing. And this is the Ukrainian drone. Ukrainian drone that were flying above the positions and basically the Ukrainians were trying to return back to their home, to the base, to the uh, FPV drone operator. And the Russians managed to capture the signal, but uh, the Russians took a decision not to, let's say, to capture the drone, but to allow the Ukrainians to fly back home. And the main purpose of that was to discover and to find the Ukrainian FPV drone operator position. And basically on this video we see how the Ukrainians, um, the Ukrainian operator, to return the drone. After that, the Russians discovered the position, and the next step was to attack the disc to destroy, to attack and destroy discovered position by the Russian FPV drone operators Babri. So, as you can see, either the Russians and the Ukrainians are trying to improve their tactics. We see a uh, lot of tricky things from the Russian side, and almost uh, just um, I would like to you to rem uh, remind, I'd like to remind you that almost every single day uh, for the previous few weeks, we were talking just about 
about all these improvements in warfare, in weapon, munition, and uh, in tactics and so on. And most of them are coming from the Russian side. Uh, interesting updates are coming from the base of, uh, let's say, Bradley Square. And the, the most the heaviest clashes took place on the line between Malatakmachka, Novoprakopovka and Verbova, where the Ukrainians tried to improve their positions. I'll remind you that during the previous two weeks, the Ukrainians managed to improve a little bit their positions on the north and west of Verbova. This is the area they managed to capture as a result of a very bloody offensive operation. During the previous week, the Ukrainians were trying to improve their positions along this line, and as a result of clashes, the Ukrainians either also managed managed to establish control over these fields and during um, the previous few days the Ukrainians mainly were concentrated and focused on this territory. They were trying to maintain the gap, maintain the gray zone and just and to shorten their positions and to establish let's say um, like a strict supply road along these three lines from Malatakmashka to the south in direction of Verbova. And the main clashes took place exactly in this area. The Russians were trying to counter attack and to slow down the Ukrainians. On this video we see how the Russian armored vehicles were trying to attack the Ukrainian offensive forces on these interceptions of road and tree line, uh, just like an episode to uh, clarify the positions to, and the combat lines of either from the Russian and the Ukrainian side. On this video we see the Russian bombardments of Ukrainian positions and on this video we see something like artillery preparation from the Ukrainian side before the next offensive operation. So uh, I'm not saying that this is something like a big offensive operation but this is a small tactic improvement that the Ukrainians are planning to achieve uh, during the next few days. So we'll see, because obviously the Ukrainians are going to attack in this direction. The Russians also understand this, and we'll see what the Russians are going to show. Uh, now we're moving to the south, the next direction. We have a few more uh, FAP 500 bombardments on the north, on the top of Novomikhailovka. Nothing special. Yes, the Russians haven't started the uh, ground operation in the village. They continue bombardments of this territory. And this is very important area, because if we zoom in, we're going to see a very powerful Ukrainian stronghold. We see the lines of trenches, so the Russians basically launched uh, like something like aviation artillery preparation of this territory. So as I understand, they're about to start another wave of offensive operation in the northern direction, let's say from Zvirinets fortification to the south, and from another Zvirinets fortification to the southwest. So this is upcoming possible plans of the Russian forces during the upcoming period of time. Uh, when talking about Avdiivka itself, we have also few updates and uh, we need to pay attention to a few important areas. The first one is the village by the name of Nitailova, the village that located on the west from Pervomaisko. On this video we see how the Russians were bombing this territory heavily with FAP 500. So you might say what is, uh, is so important in these bombardments and the main value we can find um, if we increase the number of updates. If we if we do this, let's say since the, from the beginning of November, we can see, we can notice a certain focus of the Russian forces in this area. At least uh, we have two episodes, uh, two confirmed geo-confirmed episodes of missile and FAP 500 strikes in this area. And uh, probably the Russians uh, were trying to attack the concentration of Ukrainian forces on, on this direction. And we have another uh, video of strike like uh, of Ukrainian forces in Karlovka, also using FAP 500, maybe multi-launch rocket systems. So what does it mean? Uh, we see that the Russians are using heavy weapon on this direction, and obviously the Ukrainians concentrated some forces in this area, uh, like this one, and like operational reserves uh, for the tactical, um, let's say, destination Pervomaiska. So these bombardments can also mean about upcoming plans of the Russian forces to restart or renew, renew to be more precise, to renew their offensive operation in direction of Pervomaiska, uh, like say using the two roads uh, from Pieski Pervomaiska line and the second one Vadiano Pervomaiska line. We continue receiving a lot of updates from the north and Krasnogorovka direction. Currently, this territory is covered with fog of war. Yes, this we discussed this territory in many, many details, but more and more updates are given, uh, we receive. For example, we stop receiving any updates from Stepova, Petrovska. It's currently very difficult to understand who controls the city, the village, or this village is under in the gray zone. But more and more Russian sources report that the, the Russians currently are trying to move and to 
develop their foothold exactly in direction of a Kalinova ceramics. So they like stopped any movements on the chemical plant in Berdichi Stipo. Maybe uh, the Russians realized, calculated and un realized, understood that highly unlikely they're able to do this. But for now, it's better to move to the north and to create something like this uh, before uh, another attack in direction of chemical plants. So maybe this is the situation. We need more details and obviously soon the Russians will be forced to renew their offensive operation because we stop receiving any updates from this territory, we've stopped receiving any updates from this territory for the previous, let's say, week or something. Um, we have final confirmation of uh, establishing control of the pump station uh, from another mapper, but uh, we need to uh, understand the difference, let's say, from uh, this control for, uh, between establishing control over this pump station and let's say industrial area. When talking about industrial area, this territory was captured by the Russians as a result of a very heavy clashes and offensive operation. Uh, we remember the tunnel, we remember the explosion again above the Ukrainian fortification positions and so on. And when talking the pump station, the Ukrainians took a decision by themselves to withdraw their positions and move further to the west in direction of the forest. So this is the main difference and this is uh, something new in Ukrainian tactics. The Ukrainians understand that highly unlikely they are able to mobilize another two or three hundred thousand soldiers among the Ukrainians. No matter the talks and rumors about the, let's say, total mobilization, uh, they understand that they need to save people. And more and more sources are saying that currently the Ukrainians are focused in creation of the next defense belt that goes on the line, let's say, Kurakhova, uh, Girnik, uh, Nitailova, uh, let's say, uh, Kamishivaha. Progress. So this is the next defense belt that the Ukrainians are trying to build. And uh, one more time, more and more sources confirms that as soon as the Ukrainians build this defense belt, at least as soon as they're able to build some trenches, they will step back from Avdiivka and they're not going to create another Bakhmut fortress and to kill uh, like a a hundred dozens of thousands of Ukrainian soldiers. When talking about the global scope of Ukraine, obviously we have a lot of very interesting updates about new equipment, new tactics. And um, this night I, s I mentioned a very interesting video published by the Russian sources. High Russian authorities visited another Russian plant of, of production of drones. This is like um, a very important purse people of Russian uh, like power. And uh, take a look at this scene and you're going to understand uh, the, what I'm trying to talk about. Yes, during the special military operation, we've seen different types of drones. We've seen Arlans, Lan Arlan, Lancet, FPV drones, Baba Yaga, um, and most of them are um, plane types of drones. Yes, we saw some models from the Ukrainian side, mini helicopters. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember who's uh, this technology and production. But for example, on these scenes, you can see the new Russian drones and you see, you see not just the new Russian drones, but the massive production of new Russian drones. And these Russian drones are helicopter types. So uh, maybe this is an attempt to minimize KA-52 and make a minimal version of KA-52, like say KA-52 drone. But this is another step, another Russian improvement. And I wonder what kind of possibilities these, uh, let's say, small helicopter drone has. Maybe this is going to be intelligence drones, but I don't think. I think that the Russians are planning to establish missiles, helicopter missiles on these helicopter drones. And as you can see, according to these scenes, a, mo a lot of these helicopters is at the final stage of production. And obviously soon we're going to see them on, not on the ground, but obviously above the territory, above uh, in the air of Ukrainian space. Also, the winter is coming and now it's, of course, the best time for both sides for the Russians and the Ukrainians to start to find the possibilities how to hide equipment because the weather is very low and the tanks armored vehicles during the uh, like work of the engine and the work with artillery uh, with rounds uh, is increasing the temperature so that's why it is very important during the winter period of time to find the solution how to hide the warm signature of armored vehicles and the Russians also published another type of weapon and not, not a weapon but another type of equipment 
which allow uh, the Russians to reduce the temperature, to, re to reduce the visibility of Russian armored vehicles on the ground. On this scene, for example, you can see T-90 of Russian forces who was covered by the new type of equipment that allows to reduce the visibility of this tank. And as I understand, the main purpose to reduce this visibility during the winter period of time when every single armored vehicle can be seen uh, using just uh, a regular, uh, let's say, uh, warm uh, thermatic uh, thermo equipment or something like this very interesting i see that the russians are improving their army and improving while the ukrainians try to uh, don't have possibilities to improve and they took a decision to mobilize people the russians took a decision to invest money in equipment and to reduce losses among let's say personnel by all these uh, new features and new things very interesting obviously the military campaign of 2024 will be completely different in comparison with 2020 2023 and totally different opposite different with the military campaign of 2022 uh, when talking about other front lines we haven't received almost anything just few fpv drones from ukrainian side on bilogorovka direction which also confirms some activity if you remember yesterday we discussed that we started receiving significant number of updates from this direction uh, both from both sides either from the russians and from the ukrainians fpv drone strikes artillery preparations so all these activizations tell us that very, very there are very high chances that soon uh, the Russians will start offensive operation. All these FPV drone strikes from the Ukrainian side tell us just the thing that the Russians concentrated or created a critical mass and that it's time to start some movements on this direction. So we'll see whether uh, the Russians can, are able to do this, uh, anything in this direction or not. Uh, and the sources are saying that today on the 24th of November the Russians launched another offensive operation in the direction of Sinkovka, probably 7th or 8th in a row. And that's it for this short video. Military summary channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.